I'm Peter Block at TCT in Denver, Colorado for On the Scene. With me to my left is Elvin Keddie from the Netherlands. And uh, we were talking before this interview about this issue that he has presented. What do we do about dual antiplatelet therapy? How long do we actually need it, particularly in STEMI patients, the acute patients? We really, back uh, now five years ago when this trial started, didn't have much information. So, Elvin, tell me where you began this. 2011, STEMI patients, what was the trial? Well, thank you. Uh, we started this trial because we've seen that the results with the second generation dual anti uh, second generation uh, drug eluding stents have shown that the need for dual antiplatelet therapy is not uh, as uh, important as it was for the first generation uh, drug eluding stents because the rates of stent thrombosis and MIs after implantation have dropped significantly. Uh, while that was proved for stable angina patients, we also have seen that the data, the outcomes of the stent for drug eluding stents as well uh, for, for STEMI as well as for uh, stable angina were pretty much similar. So we thought, is there maybe also, uh, is there a rationale to still use dual antiplatelet therapy for 12 months also in STEMI patients? So we put this uh, trial in place and uh, the results show that uh, the dual antiplatelet therapy could also be uh, interrupted at six months, also in STEMI patients who are event-free at six months. Okay, well you've cut to the chase very quickly here, so in acute STEMI patients, six months is as good, is as, good as 12 months. That really isn't enough though for me, right, and for some of my patients who won't take it for that long. So, number one, why didn't you do it for three months or two months or one month? Because most of us now only do it for one month in a stable angina patient with the latest stents. Tell me what your thoughts are about this and where you're going to go forward with this. Well, we could. We could, and uh, there are two ways to look to this. Uh, if you look to the stent outcomes, we could have gone for three months, but starting at three months, uh, dual antiplatelet therapy in STEMI patients in 2011 when we started would have been a mission impossible. People would have not believed it. So this is a process that we hammered the way around to it to make people give dual antiplatelet therapy for long periods. Now also it will take the same time to do it for shorter periods. But we have now, based on the results of this study, based on OCT results that we have from the Onyx uh, stand, we have uh, just launched a major, the, I think the largest uh, uh, randomized trial that is a global trial I mean more than 70 centers Dr. Stefan Windecker, myself and Dr. Azim Latip we are running this trial under the chairmanship of Dr. Greg Stone and uh, it will look to high-risk patients one month up as compared to what other uh, biofreedom stand has already shown that this is safe so we are comparing the two groups to to see if that uh, one month can be done in high-risk patients at least. High-risk being STEMI patient? Yes. No, no, not STEMI patients, all comers. Okay. STEMI is excluded actually, but the non-STEMI is okay. in the trial. So these are bleeding risk patients? And these patients are bleeding risk patients, but I, I believe that the, this is still a big part of our patients out there. Okay. So let me ask you one last question. <laughs> the whole business of long-term versus short-term DAP is an interesting one because now many people are thinking, you know, maybe I'll give DAP just to minimize atherosclerosis or minimize the ravages of atherosclerosis. Is that a reasonable thought or not? Because then it makes no difference how long you keep it for the stent. Exactly. So the, the rationale of giving dual antiplatelet therapy beyond the need for, uh, to reduce the stent thrombosis, so to reduce the general thromboembolic, uh, to give a general thromboembolic protection to these patients, while it works in reducing these events, it also associated with a high risk of bleeding. And that high risk of bleeding uh, goes up as the patients get older. Now we know that atherosclerosis is a lifelong process. So giving it one, one, one more year or two more years extra will not make a big change in the patient's life uh, lifetime. So I think we should treat the atherosclerosis and not the outcomes of it. Okay, well, an interesting trial. We know that uh, DAP therapy now can be used in lesser and lesser time, but the whole philosophy of DAP therapy now comes into question as to how long we really should do it. Thank you so much.